Hello, this is an educational video for neuroscientists. It is about membrane equations, the Hodgkin-Huxley formalism, and ionic currents in neurons. My name is Wolfgang Stein, and I run the Crab Lab at Illinois State University. I'm going to assume that you know about neurons, membrane potentials, and action potential generation. Let's start with the membrane. A membrane is a bilayer of phospholipids that separates the positive outside of the neuron from the negative cytosol. Consequently, the membrane represents a resistor between inside and outside. At the same time, since the membrane is just a few nanometers thick, it also acts as a capacitor that separates positive and negative charges. Knowing that, we can draw an electrical circuit that looks like this. An external current flows from the outside to the inside and passes the resistor and the capacitor. Kirchhoff's law says that the current splits equally between the two and so that the current, Ix, the external current, equals the resistant current, Ir, plus the capacitive current, Ic. Now, neurons encode information in the change of their membrane potential. How does the external current change the membrane potential? The influence of the resistive currents is simple as it is just proportional to the resistance. The capacitive current is more difficult because it changes over time. So we can write IC, the capacitive current, equals the capacitance, C, times dV over dt, and dV over dt is the change of the voltage over time. We can now rewrite our initial equation so that I external, Ix, equals IR plus C times dV over dt. And this allows us to calculate the change of the membrane potential that occurs due to the external current. We can write dV over dt, which is the change again of the membrane voltage over time, equals Ix minus Ir divided by C. And this essentially is the membrane equation. But of course solving this equation is not simple. One of the reasons is that the resistive current is actually the sum of many resistive currents, namely those created by ion channels in the cell membrane. The resistive current equals the sum of all currents through an ion channel, meaning the current of ion 1 plus the current of ion 2 plus the current of ion 3 and so forth. These currents could be sodium, potassium, calcium or chloride current, for example. Let's implement this in our schematics. So here's the membrane now with an ion channel through which ions can freely flow in both directions. That is equivalent to having multiple ion channels that selectively transport distinct ions. When we redraw our electric circuit, it now looks like this. For each ion channel, we have to add a resistor in parallel to the other resistors. Plus, the ion flow across the membrane depends on the driving force for that ion which is why I'm also adding a battery sign here. I will mention the driving force again later, but it has to do with the concentration gradient of the particular ions and depends on the membrane voltage. Before I get there, we have to understand that most ionic currents are not simple. They are created by channels that are voltage dependent, which means they open and close depending on the membrane potential. So we can say that the current through these channels depends on the voltage. We can then write an equation for each ionic current that looks like this. Ionic current I equals G max times M times H times V minus E. This is what Hodgkin and Huxley used in their groundbreaking work on the squid giant accident in 1952. What are these individual factors? G max is the maximum conductance of this type of ion channel. In other words, if all channels are open, this is the conductance this channel will have. Thus, it corresponds to the number of channels available, since this number limits the maximum possible conductance. By the way, conductance is just 1 over resistance. M and H are factors that vary between 0 and 1 and represent the activation and inactivation of the channel. This has to do with the fact that some ion channels have two gates, named activation and inactivation gates. Both have to be open to allow ions to pass through that channel. For example, the fast sodium channel has two gates. If M and H are 1, then all channels are open. If M and H are both 0.5, then the product is 0.25, which means that only 1 in 4 channels is open. Finally, we have the driving force for this particular ion. 
the driving force is V minus E with V being the voltage and E being the equilibrium potential of that ion. The equilibrium potential is a direct result of the concentration gradient for this ion across the membrane. In other words, it depends on how much the concentration inside differs from the outside. The distance of the membrane potential from this equilibrium potential determines how strongly ions are attracted through the channel. It also determines the direction of the current, inward or outward. Thank you for watching. I'll continue with Hodgkin and Huxley in my next video.